Hey Metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions, meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email piercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, it's Jeff McNichol down here at Mom's Music, 1900 Melwood Avenue. And I was just thinking, when I was a kid, the magic was at Frankfurt Avenue, the Mom's Music at Frankfurt Avenue. And I used to beg people to get a ride down there just to hang out with the guys and see all the cool gear. Now that I'm the owner of this store, it's like a dream come true. We're recreating the magic with the vibe that we used to have at the old store. We're carrying all the gear that you're going to possibly want. And we're giving you the outstanding service and personal attention that you deserve. Yeah, so we've got the great guitar shop here. We're carrying USA Fender, USA Gibson, Paul Reed Smith, Gretsch, Jackson, Charvel, anything you could possibly want, we're going to have it for you. Mom's is and always will be Louisville's Music Store. Thank you for tuning into the Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson and I'm your host. The premise of the show is pretty simple awesome interviews and awesome music. If you want to contact me, hit me up at metalforgeradio at gmail.com or visit the website metalforgeradio.com. And now, let's get this show on the road. What is going on, Metalheads? Thank you all for tuning in to the last episode of the Metal Forge of 2021. My name is Mark Jackson, and I am your host. Today, I have Tyron from Lansing, Michigan, here in the Metal Forge, and we're going to be talking about their upcoming album, along with so much more. Thrash metal fucking awesomeness is what we're going to be talking about with those guys. Yeah can't wait for it can you absolutely not so again you know i do want to take a minute here and say i hope you all had a nice holiday that last week that i hope everything was safe for you guys and you got to spend time with friends and family and you got some pretty cool stuff because that's what matters you know the love and uh awesomeness from friends and family and I want to thank my friends and, and family for the stuff that they gave me for Christmas and just feeling overall, hell yeah, loved, you know, because it's fucking awesome. So I want to tell you all really fast about this really cool thing. This is some stats of the Metal Forge in 2021. This today is the 55th episode this year of the Metal Forge. Super fucking cool, you know, and so we did three extra episodes this year, which I, 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 I'm I really torn on doing extra episodes because sometimes it, it really cuts into the weekly listens for everything else. It's like, oh, wow, two? Oh, my gosh, do I have time to listen to both of them kind of thing. But thank you all seriously for tuning in each and every week, listening to these bands, giving your suggestions, sending me bands. Thank you all so fucking much. And with that 55 episodes, so that's overall today is the 155th episode of The Metal Forge. And with that, you know, I've had so many awesome guests come in the studio over the year from Night Demon to Thor to Anvil to Chris Natalini of Blood Feast. Some really awesome fucking bands. And 2022 is looking even more cool with the bands that I've got lined up to come in. More on that later. I'd like to give you some of them, but you know, just like everybody else, I can't, I can't let it go. I can't just let it go yet. And spoil who might be coming in here soon. Yeah. But seriously, on top of that, 
in 2022. The Metal Forge Live Showcase shows are coming back to Louisville, Kentucky at the Mag Bar. I have the first one on March 27th, then there's one in June, one in September, and the last one of the year is in December. So get your asses out to Louisville, Kentucky at least once this year, maybe hopefully four times, because we're going to throw a fucking hell of a big shindig at the Mag Bar four times this year for the Metal Forge Live Showcase featuring Metal Forge bands, bands that have showed up on the show. Fucking right. So who's ready for the top five albums slash releases of 2021 as according to me? Super rad. And I want to just tell everybody that this list is super hard to come up with because these 10 albums over the last two weeks that I have mentioned, some of them should have been higher up to what I've been told by some people. Some of them are like, dude, why is that even on the list? And it's honestly, I listen to albums in their entirety and just have to gauge off of that. Some of these It might not be a one-song thing. It might only be, you know, uh, track placement makes a big difference for me. Like, if it doesn't flow right, it might get a number four or number five. Not saying that's on directly on this list, but it has happened in the past. So, let's get into five through one of the albums of 2021. For me, number five, Sadistic Force, Pain, Sex, and Rapture. Super rad fucking thrash from Texas. You can't get much fucking heavier than that, really, because it's fucking Texas metal. And we all know Texas metal in the past has been fucking crazy awesome. Number four, and a lot of people are going to probably give me shit over this because it's Haunt's Beautiful Distraction on my list at number four. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Haunt. Trevor is such an amazing artist and writer. He has put out some of the best material in music over the last seven or eight years. This album is no joke at fucking all. I mean, I I really feel bad for putting it at number four, but the other three albums that are coming before it were just a fucking steamroller of albums. So, number three. Shadowlands Necromancer's Castle. And just from an artwork standpoint right there, Tanya's artwork is super fucking cool. It is total awesomeness when you look at the album. It is everything you expect it to be. And when you put it on, and it just comes out, and it's holy fucking shit. It's super fucking powerful. I can't really like put it into words how awesome it is. And to me, there is something great about a powerful female fronted band. Uh, Shadowland is one of them, Lady Beast is another, and so is Savage Master. There is something about those bands that just will kick you in the sack and and just are super fucking powerful. Number two. Morgul Blades Fell Sorcery Abound. When I put this on the first time, I I sit there and I, I took it and I was like, wow. These guys, when I had them on last December, they they had me going right then with with the uh, with the single, you know, with the EP or whatever. They had it going, and when they finally delivered this album, it was like typo meets thrash, and I was just like completely taken aback by it because it's it's heavy, it's melodic, it's fast, it's got acoustic parts, it's crazy awesomeness. And I absolutely love it. Before I get to number one, I do want to give some honorable mentions of albums that probably should have been on the list, but there are things out there for my taste that just edged them out just a bit. So it it could have been a top 12 list of albums, honestly. And uh, honorable mention number one is... Lava Born, Black Winged Gods. I know y'all just heard the episode a couple weeks back with Chris Latta from Lava Born here in the Metal Forge, and it's awesome stuff. It's got power, it's got speed, it's got glory, it's out there, and it's bam, right in your face. So, honorable mention number two is going to be Wraith, Undo the Chains. 
And for the same reason for Lava Born, it's got power and glory and speed, and it's right in your face from beginning to end, from the album artwork to the production to everything. And I'm totally looking forward to hearing more out of both of those bands in 2022 because, fuck, dude, they're they're awesome shit, man. Everybody on this list is awesome and has such talent. Super rad stuff. Number one on the list of my top albums and EPs and releases, whatever you want to call it, I know I say that every time, (laughs) of 2021 will be Bewitcher, Cursed Be Thy Kingdom. Beginning to end, it's insane. Like, I had... This is the one of the only albums this year that I have listened to in its entirety on repeat. And I don't usually do that. It really takes some powerful production, songwriting, and hook to get me to flip over and just re-listen and re-listen and re-listen to stuff. This album has done that for me. And, you know, just as much as they did in the past, this album... I cannot wait to see what they do in the future. Holy crap, man. Like, wow. I Number one, again, Bewitchers, Cursed Be Thy Kingdom. Amazing production. Just, it's a, it's a banger, man. Like, all, all the tracks, one to the end. Just everything. Super cool stuff. But anyways, that's the list. Let's see what 2022 has to offer, because if 2021 can produce a list of those bands and those albums, 2022 will have to be so much better with music. And yeah, fucking right. Down below, there are links to the sponsors, and without you guys supporting them, they can't support the Metal Forge either. And I am so grateful that you all do help these businesses. Whether you're listening to their podcast, you're buying instruments from them, you're going and getting tattoos, you're going to the Discogs page. Thank you all so much, and continue to please support all of these guys. You know, Ageless Art, Tattoo and Piercing, Mom's Music, Maxwell's House of Music, Better Days Records, Unchained Tapes, Mercenary Press, The Wrestling Steve Show, The Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast, The It's Gonna Get Weird Podcast. Keep supporting those guys, because every bit helps us at the Metal Forge, and it helps them too. Also, making sure you all uh, click on the Spotify playlist as well. You get to hear all of the previous uh, bands that have been on the show, and you'll be supporting those people as well, too. Thank you all. So let's go ahead and get into some Tyrant here. I know you all are ready to hear some, because I am ready to play some. So this is off of their album, The Pact. This is Fear of Faith.
Hey, Metalheads, I've got a super awesome fucking treat today. I have Tyrant from Lansing, Michigan. Thrash Metal Madness to close out 2021. Dudes, who do I have here with me today? What's up, Mark? It's uh, Philip Winters and Andrew Winters. Hell We're half yeah. of the band Tyrant from Lansing. Dudes, what is going on? Not much, man. Just it's freezing uh, up here in the it, snow. Yeah, enjoying this 20 degree weather. Shit. You up know, here in Michigan. I could not like deal with that. My like goal in life at this point is to get away from the cold weather. And I'm only, you know, a few hundred miles south of you by it at Louisville, Kentucky here. It doesn't get near as cold, but man, over the last few years, it has got balls cold here, and I'm just not digging the cold yeah. weather anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's pretty brutal, especially this time of year. Right. I mean, plus you all get snow, like, you know, all the time up there in winter. Yeah, yeah. a lot of it. A lot of snow. <laughs> See, I, I couldn't do that. I could not live, you know, essentially on Canada's doorstep, I guess, you know, whether it be in Michigan yeah. or out in, like, near Buffalo or in Minnesota. I just, it's just too much. I slid in ice here a week or two ago when we had, you know, just a, a very, like, minuscule thing happen overnight. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always tell the people, you know, West Coast Mexico is the place to be because it's clear, oh, yeah. clear blue water. Cost of living's like dirt cheap, you know, 600 bucks a month for a 3,500 square foot condo. I would do it you oh, know, yeah. in a heartbeat, you know, bam, yeah, man. there it is. But that's not why we're here. We're not here to talk about my fucking retirement goals. We're here to talk about Tyrant. <laughs> tell everybody okay. out in Metal Forge land here, what's up with Tyrant? Uh, well, currently we're finishing up production on album number two. Um, you know, we were actually working on, uh, some of the track before we hopped on the call and, uh, just going through some of the parts and making sure, you know, they're as tight as we can possibly be and, and just make the songs really good. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So that's what we, that's what we've been doing sequestered in our, in our houses away from the cold, just making an album. For sure. So album number two, I, I noticed you, you called it album number two and you didn't give me a name or anything, which is totally cool. Not, yeah, not yet. Not yet. Ah, damn. damn. Very, very soon though. Very soon. Definitely. So are we planning a early 2022 release for this? Um, it's looking most realistically by June, um, because we're working with a record label this time. We're still kind of uh, going back and forth with them, and we still have to get everything signed. But um, per their release, you know, it, it's looking like June, July. Okay. Um, but we should be announcing announcing it um, middle of February, I think. Nice. So here in just a, just over a month, you know. So that's awesome stuff. Yeah. With this, are we going to go? I, and I always have, I'm an advocate. I always am that guy who has to sit there and say, you know what? I have to have a physical copy of something. I will buy digital as long, you know, as I can get the physical copy at some point too. I mean, if I can't get it, obviously I still will buy a, a digital, but I like to have both with working with this label. Are we looking at doing physical release as well? Uh, yeah. CD and I believe vinyl as well. Yeah. The, the plan is to do vinyl for sure. Oh my gosh. Cause we, we, yeah, we've never done vinyl in the past, but you know, it's something cause I'm a bit of a, a vinyl collector myself and I just love, you know, sitting there looking at the album artwork and, uh, you know, just listening to the album because I feel like it's a lost art form of, you know, the artwork and the music and, and the physical product all coming together. Well, you're absolutely right. Yeah, we're, and I, and it is a lost art at that, at some point when it comes to just buying albums on a digital scale, because you just don't get the same experience as you do when you're sitting in a dimly lit room <laughs> in headphones or just out in the room as it is. I like to do both because sometimes you hear multiple things on headphones. More on that in, in a bit. For mm. sure. The just studying an album jacket, reading the liner notes, it's an experience. And I don't think a lot of people today, a lot of younger people in, in particular, 
have that experience that, that I got to have when I was, you know, 11, 12, 13 years old listening to albums. Yeah, man. It's, and you know, it's kind of like a testament to the way music is, you know, cause everybody's used to just hearing songs in like a jumbled format, you know, and like bands back in the day, they used to put songs in like a certain order to have a specific flow and, and meaning and all that stuff. And, you know, like I said, you know, I, 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 I listened to a lot of prog rock growing up, like yes. And, King Crimson and Gentle Giant and all that stuff. So like they were very me- uh, methodical with with their approach to putting the album together, and that's something that definitely influences us, for sure. And you know, you you mentioned the thing just a second ago, and I want to hit on this really fast that songs needed to be in a certain order to improve the flow, and I think that's a that's a half truth. And let me explain why. Because prog bands, yes, I can absolutely, Jethro Tull, <laughs> Pink Floyd, King Crimson, yes, all of those bands, Rush, all of those bands, I could totally see doing it for an album flow. But if it's mm-hmm. fucking Nazareth, or it's, you know, Led Zeppelin, or Black Sabbath, I think it's just whatever order fit best on the timing of the album. You know, yeah, you, you got like 45 true. minutes, so you got to fill out, you know, 22 minutes per side or whatever 22 and a half minutes per side so it's like well we can't fit this nine minute fucking track on side a because of this so we have to take some of these shorter tracks off of side b to to compensate yeah i guess i had never really thought about that because you know with vinyl it's very limited to a certain amount of time each side so oh absolutely true and you know that's always one of my questions i like to ask people who i know produce vinyl for everything that they do is do you write your album as a time constraint or do you what you just say fuck the system with it and this is this album's going to be 55 minutes if it takes two discs to make it we're just going to do it that way I'll, I'll, it's been a mixed bag of results i think i think i've got quite a few people who have sit there and said no we we try to limit it to you know we we know we're only going to do one disc so a side A and a side B. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, you know, with albums, unless you're, like I said, unless you're getting into that prog stuff, a short, sweet album, you know, is the way to go. You got to leave them wanting more. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, because if, if it's too long, and, and I, I read this quote from Mario Duplantier from Gojira about their newest album, and they actually shortened a lot of it because they wanted to keep it short and sweet. You know what I'm saying? And not, you know, drag it out. No, you're absolutely right with that. I think there's a sweet spot. To me, where I grew up, I grew up about a half an hour outside of Louisville, Kentucky, to the north in Indiana. So it took me a half an hour to get to town, you know, to get to the next biggest city. So that drive, you know, was perfect for, you know, like listening to something like Rain and Blood. It's only like 33 minutes. Yeah. You know, so it's like a perfect length of a, of a, of a medium pace drive, you know, and I think, yeah, know, man. And I think where bands come in and, and do albums that are 70 or 80 minutes that to, you know, to afford the luxury of what CD has given people with 80 minute uh, discs and shit like that. Sometimes it's too much. You know, a lot of times it's too yeah, much. Yeah. Agreed. You know, like I look at and, and where I'm a Metallica fan. Load and reload. Those albums are, are just so long. You've got, yeah. you've got multiple songs that are eight and nine minutes on those albums. And it's, it's oh, a yeah. lot. It's a lot to process, you know, when you're spending, you know, an hour and 20 minutes listening to an album. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a commitment for sure, man. For sure. <laughs> Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground, from the graves of all those unholy, and they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine, an independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats, they're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. 
Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day, all with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. We talked about the album. You're recording your second album. You want to put it out on vinyl, which is super rad, because vinyl, I think, is where it's at today. And it's not just from a a collection standpoint, because I collect things as well, like with vinyl and shit like that, too. But, like, it's, to me, it's the resurgence of vinyl. A lot of people have got back into it and wanted to just say, you know what? This is what I remember from being a kid or whatever. I want to do this for my stuff, too. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, too, is because, you know, Andrew and I both really have always loved vinyl. and We just want to put our own music on it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. And I think with doing a vinyl release, it adds so many different options out there because you can have multiple colored discs and it becomes a collectible at that point because if somebody releases yeah. three different colors of vinyl i know people who are fanatical about it like they will get the black oh, yeah. vinyl they will get the red transparent and they will get like the ice blue smoke <laughs> you know a variant edition yeah. which which i've seen that tons of people do stuff like that and it's actually really cool that we're in this day and age you know having a a black variant of your vinyl is pretty rare that like that seems to be like the the smallest number printed for some some of these labels out there. Oh yeah. The the only thing like with vinyl and everything is I seriously hope that in the next few months it really starts to correct itself. And what I mean by that is there are so many bands out there. There's so many places. They're pressing so much vinyl, they're backlogged for almost a year. Oh yeah, man. And that's hardcore. Yeah, it's it's really backed up. Yeah. I know that I was talking with somebody and he was and he he's one of those guys he puts out an album on vinyl every single album that he's done since like 2013 or some shit. And he was just like, "Hey, this is the new thing I'm doing. The CD comes out in January. We're looking at next January before we have the vinyl." And it's like, "Wow." Yeah. And and it's hardcore. It's yeah, it's it's totally hardcore because I'm like, is it really worth it to press the vinyl at that point? I know you're going to get the pre-sales, but is it really worth it to press it when you figure you're going to have probably three other releases by that time? Yeah, man, it, it's 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 weird right now, you know, with how backlogged everything is and, and all these people, you know, all these bands that have been sitting at home, you know, from COVID and stuff, everybody's making an album. And so it's just going to get even further backlog you know what i'm saying oh absolutely and i do think too that you know there's not only just the the backlog of production from everybody being creative and making albums and pressing them i also think it's a material shortage as well because yeah there's there's an artist out there that pressed over a million copies of their of their record that doesn't happen regularly anymore, you know, when you're pressing a million copies of something. But like when when you have one person that does that, it's kind of it kind of turns the the industry on a whole, you know, like up on its ear, I guess. Mm. But yeah, hopefully in the next few months, like I said, I hope it writes itself. I hope, you know, you're able to get to vinyl within a decent amount of time, even if it's yeah, a few months. We hope so. 
Tell me about Tyrant as a whole, because looking here, consulting on the Metal Archives, it shows that you all were around from like 2011. So you, you just, you know, you just recently passed like a 10 year anniversary mark, which that's awesome. Yeah, we uh, well, we started when we were I think I was fif- 15 and he was 13. Andrew was 13. Yeah, our first show. Our very first show. We were. We were still teenagers. Andrew was a new teenager at that point. And then, uh, you know, we just played around regionally and then put out a couple EPs, did some touring, put out an album in 2018. And then uh, we went on tour in 2020 and COVID happened and we've just been at home making making this fucking record like nonstop. So, you know, writing the songs, rewriting the songs pre-production and now we're actually like nearing the the end of the actual production phase so okay so you guys are doing the album at home you're not actually going to the studio or or what or do you have your own home studio type thing so yeah i i mean we have like a, a home studio it's nothing fancy but we have all the same tools and and equipment that pretty much any studio we've gone to in the past had so you know, we figured we might as well really take this time to dive into the songs and, you know, just really analyze our playing um, and really analyze uh, the songwriting as a whole. You know what I'm saying? So we've, we've been self-producing, but we have a uh, we have a mix and master engineer from Fort Wayne, Indiana. John of, of Bang Studios is a great guy. He he mixed and mastered Poison the Well, okay. and uh, we thought it turned out really, really well. So, so we're going to have him mix and master the new album. Definitely. And that is always a, a nice thing to have is to have somebody out there away from the camp. Oh, yeah. Because too many people can get that's that have their hands in it. Let's just say that. You can have your hands in it so much, and then you lose sight of what the overall goal should be. And then you start getting, like, you know, there's that meticulousness that you you start dissecting every little bit of everything. And then just having somebody else out there to mix and master is is a great thing. Yeah, man. And, you know, that's super cool. I'm looking forward to it. I know the metal fans out there, you know, the people who listen to the show are definitely going to be looking forward to this as well. So oh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we can hear a new song here soon. Hope yeah. Y'all uh, dropping a yeah, single. The, yeah, the planning to drop one early. Well, in the first quarter of next year, at least, That's with a, a new music video and everything. You say in the in the first quarter, that gives me anxiety because I always look at the very end of. I'm like, it's gonna be March. It's gonna be March. It's like that's like three months from now. I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it'll 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 be here before you know it. Definitely. So, with artwork for the album, is there anybody? Because I I was looking at your artwork for the pact and poison the well and like for example i love the pact artwork because it's just i love the overall simplicity of it i love it's it almost looks like a like it could be in a mausoleum (laughs) that's exactly what it's supposed to be nice so i got it (laughs) yeah yeah well we did uh we did that artwork and poison the well ourselves um but we have we hired this new guy to do the artwork for for the upcoming album um i mean up until this point we've done pretty much everything ourselves you know we've designed all of our merch we've designed all the album covers all of it and we we you know going back to what you said to have somebody outside of our group you know We've definitely just wanted to kind of hand, you know, give people ideas and just let them, you know, take control of, uh, you know, we trust their artistic ability. So we give them control of the artwork and, uh, you know, cause all at the end of the day, we just want to focus on the music. You know right. what I'm saying? Absolutely. With the ability to give you the, give somebody, yeah, that's exactly the direction to go with the artwork. Yeah. I, I get that because I, I've, I'm the same way. I try to contract it out with, with my deal where it's like, okay, here's the idea of what I have. Show me what you got. And yeah, man, that's, I was just going to say that's exactly what we're doing with, uh, this new album artwork because the guy we're, we're having do it is, uh, Daniel Porter from the Pit Forge. Huh. He does like haunt. Yes. Give him a massive, yeah, massive fucking shout out to the Pit Forge. Uh, yeah, I, I know him he's well. A he's guy. a great guy. Yeah. He does so much stuff. He, he's done so many bands, Haunt, Saber, Oath, all yep. these awesome bands that, uh, that have been out. 
here in the in like the new wave of traditional heavy metal stuff. He's done so much of that stuff. Um, just a super rad guy. He he definitely follows the show. So definitely a big shout out to. Oh yeah. Definitely a big shout out to Daniel. I mean, just even his flyer work is great too. Because that I love that yeah. whole you know that whole deal of just like the oldness of the way things look. It looks like a classic thing. It's very much like. We, we saw him on Instagram and I re- we both really liked his art style because we re- we reached out to a, a couple other guys. We just, at the end of the day, we just thought it wouldn't be as good of a fit as, as Daniel's artwork because some of, you know, some of Daniel's designs look a lot like our merch designs that we already do. So we thought it'd be a perfect fit right out of the gate. Definitely. He, like I said, you know, his style that he has really lends to the metal today. Yeah, man. Because with that, and when I sit there and said like that new wave of traditional heavy metal, it's not that far removed from the original uh, New Album stuff, the new wave of British heavy metal and stuff. There's not much. Yeah, it's like possibly the, the grandson of the new wave of British heavy metal. And those bands that had those albums take like Behold the Beginning from Diamond Head with the church. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that look. British Steel has that look. Screaming for Vengeance has a look. And I think today, yep. you know, bands like, for example, Bewitcher, with their newest album, yeah. Curse, Cursed Be Thy Kingdom, has a look to it. Has that with Daniel doing so much of that awesome artwork. Yeah, there's a lot. He's doing a lot for a lot of people, but it fits. Yeah, that's the big thing is is it he gives it uh, its own unique spin each time. Definitely. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.com bigcartel.com Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that to distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. So let's go ahead and switch gears here. Let's ask you guys some general profile questions about you as people, because that's what we do here on the Metal Forge. Okay. Philip, you told me a minute ago, uh, well, more than a minute ago at this point, that you're a vinyl collector. So let's throw that away for a minute. Let's not consider that. (laughs) Metalheads are usually eclectic people. We collect a lot of things. Where we go on tour, you know, we just find little knickknacks and all this shit, right? So what do you all collect? Well... Other than music, that is. I'll let Andrew go. I got to think about that. Um, I don't know. My vinyl collection is pretty small, actually. I got, like, bare minimal. I know. But I like to collect... This may sound strange, but I like to collect rocks when we go out on tour. Like I'm, every state, I get at least five different rocks. Yeah, he's a he's a rock collector for sure. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know what? I have a small collection of rocks myself, actually. Now that <laughs> now that amazing. I think about it, yeah, I, uh, I found some. Uh, this one time, I found like the, this rock. I had a bunch of coral in it, and it was behind a Waffle House out in the middle <laughs> of nowhere. Yeah, I think I think I remember yeah, that. Yeah, like, it had like bright pink and purple coral in it, which is <laughs> perfect. If if I had a dollar for everything that I've heard came out from the back of a Waffle House, I would have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, I think I think I like to collect. I mean, outside of of vinyl, I mean, I don't know. I I guess I collect books, really. Yeah, and well, and, and 
as Andrew points to my wall full of fucking tour posters and show posters, I do like to cl- collect show posters from ones we've played or ones I've seen. And um, yeah, I mean, books and books and posters, really. Definitely. And I mean, it, I got, the posters I got, thing, really I really lame, but yeah, I'm, I like to read. And I, one of, one of my uh, life goals is to have like this massive, almost like Victorian esque <laughs> library you know, with, with as much literature as I can fathom, you know what I'm saying? You're going to, are you going to have like the ladder? Yep. The ladder and, and a, and a wood fireplace and it'll be dimly lit yeah, with candles. Be haunted too. I want to live the life of a, of a, of a 16th century vampire pretty much. Hey, there is not a fucking thing wrong with that. <laughs> if you're going to do it, go for it. Hell yeah. So on the same regard here with collection of things. You, you did mention you like to collect posters from tours and so on and so forth, whether you've played the show or you, you know, it's a show that you've went to. And posterity is a great thing. Let's just say that. Do you collect mm-hmm. your own music? Um, I would say so, yeah. I mean, we have like one of the first press seats we've ever done. It's yeah. Like not- yeah. I mean, we, whenever we do a new album or EP or, or print new media, whether it's t-shirts or CDs or whatever, we always keep one of the originals. And like Andrew said, you know, we have a couple of uh, a CDs that we have just unwrapped. And it's kind of like just for our own sake, you know what I'm saying? Just so we can kind of admire it and be like, this is what all this hard work has kind of resulted in. Definitely. What was the first album you purchased with your own money? With our own money? Hold, hold on. I got to think about this. I think I think one of the f- very first albums, and I could be mistaken, was probably some. Uh, I don't know if I bought the Kiss cassette or if it was a Lamb of God CD. It was one of those two. I was uh, was it? I don't we, know. Did we buy the Jack TV? I think so. Because yeah, we did. Because we saw it at like some bookstore. Are you familiar with the band Jackal? No, of course. Yeah, they're you know classic rock band. Fucking. Super dirty, way too dirty for some ten year olds, eight and ten year olds to be listening to. But I think that was one of the first records that Andrew or CDs that Andrew and I picked out like on our own. <laughs> and uh it's just such a great album. Like we were listening to it like a couple months ago, but yeah. And then I mean obviously some of our f- first my first serious music listening experiences are definitely with like uh kisses psycho circus you know our dad had that on cassette and that just kind of like flipped the switch and you know that was the pivotal moment when when we were like okay music is our thing it was into acdc thunderstruck yeah over that just like definitely lots of absolutely rapid fire sabbath or zeppelin sabbath is that Sabbath for both? Yeah, it was we, we yeah we <laughs> said it in unison. I don't know oh, if you heard it. No, I I didn't hear uh, I didn't hear Andrew say it. That's why I asked. Another rapid fire: <laughs> Priest or Maiden? I have to go with Priest. Oh, shit, I'd have to go with uh, Judas Priest as well. Nice, yeah. nice. Just straight up ripping heavy metal, man. I love Iron Maiden, but right, I don't it's know. that it's that thing, it's that division. There, yeah. they both controlled uh, metal in the eighties at, at that point with you know with the British and uh, new wave invasion deal. So, absolutely, they uh, it, that's a hard one. Uh, what do you do to get away from music? Turn it off. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, obviously, I like to read. <laughs> right. We, uh, let's. I like- Let's go ahead and skip that one because I already I already knew you were gonna say read and I, I, I knew it as soon as I asked the questions like you told me it's a fucking book collection, you dumbass. <laughs> and then and then Andrew just goes, Turn it off. <laughs> it's like fuck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What was the first concert you ever went to? Kiss. Yeah, it was Kiss. It was a uh, Kiss Poison and Z O T I believe. Wow. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what, I don't think Poison. Yeah, it was, was just, there. it was, no, it was just ZO2 and Kiss. No, I'm pretty sure Poison was No. There. We saw Poison three separate times. Was that a DT when we first saw? Yeah. The, the very first concert I remember, well, that we both went to was, was Kiss. And it was just so fucking awesome, man. When you could feel the fire from oh, like, yeah. we were way, we were so far from the stage and you could still feel the fire. We I was, were, and we were so young. I can't even remember how young we were, but we we had our minds absolutely I think I was blown. In kindergarten, kindergarten yeah, you, or first grade. Yeah, we couldn't have been like 
older than six or seven years old at that point. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I See, I safe. never got to go to a concert that young. Oh, yeah. Our our parents have always been like, you know, well, we, we got turned on. Like I said, we got turned on to music just from our dad's uh, music collection and you know they whatever he likes we like and you know obviously he's got his own tastes and we do too but you know they're they're as much into music as we are so you know they're a huge part of why we're so into music you know what i'm saying definitely i actually got to see kiss for the first time in 2019 nice yeah we saw him on that tour as well in grand rapids nice that was amazing it, it was. I was. Did they have the guy who who did they have an opener? Yeah, they had some guy painting. Yeah, he, uh, he did like a picture of Paul McCartney, and I he was. He did. Uh, I think he did Dave Bowie at the Grand Rapids show. Yeah, he did. Did he do it upside yeah. down? Yeah. yeah, dude, is that not wild? <laughs> it was so fucking cool, man. That's insane. Hey, Metalheads, it's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio, something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at... 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 47150. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby. Hey guys, Wrestling Steve of the Wrestling Steve Show here. Uh, so if you're currently listening to the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson, then you understand that Mark Jackson has a pretty discerning taste when it comes to music as a whole. You also understand that he has a discerning taste for professional wrestling, just like me. The, my show is called The Wrestling Steve Show. Uh, I talk about modern and classic pro wrestling in a completely unbiased, unfiltered way. Be sure to check me out on all available podcasting platforms. That is The Wrestling Steve Show. And I am the host, Wrestling Steve. Just remember, uh, like like Confucius said, uh, man who goes through turnstile in Thailand uh, is going to Bangkok. Pro wrestling. What is your most unpopular music opinion? <laughs> the Beatles are overrated. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to agree or disagree with that statement. Because uh, okay, I, I will. I will say I understand your 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 uh, saying that. <laughs> I and I a hundred percent understand why you would say that. Some parts of their career are vastly overrated. Some of yeah. them are not so much. Right. Don't get me wrong. Like they have, you know, they have the obvious classics, and you can't. I mean, they they still wrote some good songs. But do I think they're at? Do they deserve as much praise? Uh, that uh, that's kind of where my unpopular opinion comes in. I get it. No, you're absolutely right. And I think again, it's like what I just said is, uh, you know, I'm not too keen on uh, psychedelic Beatles. You know, like shit like Magical Mystery Tour, or Yellow Submarine, stuff mm, like that. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's parts of it that I like, but on a whole. I think it's vastly overrated, but things like the stripped down version of Let It Be yeah. is so is far superior to almost everything they'd ever done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I get you. My opinion. I mean I'm not too fond of AC D C. I just Well, can't. we listened to a shit ton of it when we were kids. I know, but once I'm getting older, it's just the kind of the same drum beat over and over again. It just seems like the same formula for every song. I think it has been that way for like forty years. Yeah, but they still rip. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I just, I literally, I can't get myself to sit down and listen to it for some reason. I just can't. Right. And I get it. It's, again, like you said, it's the same, it's repetition. And for 50 years at this point, I think, and, and ACDC has been brought up over the last few weeks. And it's all, it's been brought up to the point where it's like, okay, what album changed your life? Back in Black has been the answer for a few people. Over the last couple of weeks. 
in point with that is Back in Black is a near if not perfect album. It's the it's an album that you can listen to front to back. You can listen to it back to back even. If that, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's just so many other albums of theirs that are not really you're not able to do that with. You know, I couldn't do that with like for those about to rock or, or anything like that. But, or, uh, I mean, Highway to Hell, possibly, but like Dirty Deeds, I couldn't do that with it. So I tried to not gauge them on just like a back in black, you know. And so I do get your point of what you're saying is there is a lot of repetition. And sometimes repetition does not, uh, what's, what's the thing I'm looking for here? It's, um, repetition does not always equal dependability. Yeah. Because I've heard so many people say, ah, it's ACDC, they're a dependable band, because you know what you're going to get. That's also true. Uh, it's not, but it's to me, it's not, they're not interchangeable. But I also think St. Anger is a pretty decent album. But what the fuck do I know? Hey, I, I'm not going to lie, R- production aside, it's got some great songs, man. And somebody said it sounds like they recorded a midlife crisis. <laughs> oh, who was the well, they did. Yeah, and and I mean that's that's exactly what it is. There's a there's a comment on one of the videos about them recording the sound of money about the black the album. Black album, yeah. Yeah, oh. <laughs> we were watching. Yeah, we were watching this uh, a day, a year and a half in the life of Metallica while they were making the black album. Yeah, and some some was trashing the album about the the recording and how Bob Rock, you know, made the production too polished. And then somebody chimed in and they're like, oh, you mean the Black Album where they literally recorded the sound of money? (laughs) You know, it's the it's the highest grossing metal album ever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I know exactly what you... Dude, I work part-time in a record store, and I can't tell you how many times I see people... And I only work there one fucking day a week, okay? And I can't tell you how many times mm-hmm. I see people walk out with a Black Album, still, to this day. Oh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I don't think if, if the Black Album wasn't as popular as it was, I don't think they would uh, have near the... I don't want to say following... I mean, obviously that album put them into the mainstream. Oh, yeah. Made non-metal fans metal fans. I mean, I got the box set when it came out in September. Not going to lie. And I like everything that came with the set, like all the demos and all that shit. But I'm a hound for that stuff. Continuing. For the listeners out there, recommend an album or artist to get into. Well, the first one that comes to mind is, for me, is one that I've been listening to a lot of lately. It's uh, Unto Others from Portland, Oregon. They just put out a new record called Strength. Fucking phenomenal record front to back. Yeah, it was a good record. Mana is amazing as well, and I totally Hell agree yeah. with you. Shout out to Gabe and Hell the yeah. guys in both Unto Others and Silver Talon, for sure. Yeah, man. Metal Forge alumni, both of those bands, they've been on here before. So, hell yeah. Um, I think mine would have to be Crypta, up and coming Brazilian, say, death metal. Death That's metal, yeah. Saying, death metal band. Yeah, Crypta's fucking awesome. Yeah, hell I yeah. Love super heavy and just creepy as fuck. I it's am not good. familiar with, so I'll have to check out. I'm always looking for, um, for new Yeah, dude, you gotta metal. listen. They're fucking awesome. They're so, and I, I really don't listen to a whole lot of that heavy style of metal. Like, often, you know, like, I like death and stuff, but Crypta is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, their new album, uh, what is it, Echoes of the Soul? Yeah. There's no, there's no song that I don't like. It's all killer, no filler. Fucking right. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna, you, you've already sold me. I'm, as soon as I'm getting out of here today, I am definitely looking them up. For sure. It's Jeff with Mom's Music, and I just wanted to thank all of our loyal customers and our friends And I want to thank my staff for a great year in 2021. We faced a lot of challenges. Um, Those guys, they stepped up, the customers and the staff, and met every single one of them. I just wanted you to know that uh, we're all stocked up for 2022, and we couldn't do without you. And we love to meet new people, meet new friends, and teach people about the Moms Music brand and the Rising Stars Music Academy. So, I want to wish you all a happy new year, and again, thank you. Hey, it's Mark Maxwell at Maxwell's House of Music. Listen, all this stuff is now available to purchase on our website, 
Check it out at maxwellshouseofmusic.com. We carry all the top brands, like Fender. We got Gibson. We also have basses. We've got ukuleles. We've got drums. We've got sound gear. We've got keyboards. It's Gonna Get Weird is the name of the podcast. We're on season two, so you have a whole season to get weird with Frank Green and Scott Clark. The best part is there's always laughter. Oh, you need to pull that out. We have national touring comedians, NFL stars, rock stars, your local friends. It always gets weird. Weird answers. Have y'all ever snorted coke off of a 78 Pinto? No? You ain't no Man. Weird questions. Who had a bigger cocaine habit, Jock Sutherland or Kaywood Ledford? <laughs> Neither one, because they stopped beating their wives. <laughs> and weird, we never even thought of. Well, no, my friend is on acid, and I sent my friend to go find a payphone so that I can call and turn myself in for murdering this guy and ruin my life. We love all types of people, but we don't love all people. <laughs> <laughs> weird. It's gonna get weird. Is the name of the podcast available everywhere? And thank you to Big X Sports Radio for being a proud sponsor of It's Gonna Get Weird. Frank Green, Scott Clark. Yeah. Got one more question, but do you have any shout-outs you want to give to anybody? Uh, Shout-out to all of the people listening. Yeah, you know? seriously. <laughs> thanks, thanks for listening, man. And, and anybody who's supported us in the past and continues to support us, especially, you know, with us just pretty much not doing much these past two years, we, have, we haven't been able to play. So anybody who's bought merch, listen to interviews listen to music anything you know in the in the past couple years thanks man thanks for the support hell yeah and always links will be listed below so give a like a share a follow go to Bandcamp, purchase some music follow these guys find out where they're playing hopefully they're coming to your city or somewhere else close to you final question of the day is what album changed your life i'd have to say one that made me change kind of like personalities and how I dress and everything was Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. Yeah. Now when I uh, dip my toe into heavy metal, I fell right in and I couldn't get out. Nice. <laughs> you know, that I can get behind that as well because there's something about that album where it's just, it's the dawn of a new age of metal in my opinion. Oh, yeah. And you had things like... You know, take the you know take the glam side of Pantera out of this. Just don't even consider that. But you yeah. had you had thrash, okay, in the eighties, and and death metal and and stuff like that. But when you get to like Cowboys, and it's that beginning of the nineties Texas thrash. There's something completely different about it. And it's not the sa- it's not the same as like East Bay, or it's not the same as like you know, uh, Florida or any shit like that. And it's something completely different. Yeah, deadly. Right, and I mean it's sonically, even with that little bit of flange or phase, you know, on the guitar that it, as soon as Cowboy starts, and mm-hmm. and they just built and got heavier. In the years. Oh yeah, I contra. I and I know this might be another unpopular opinion, but I think it should have been either Pantera and or Testament in the big four instead of Anthrax. I do not like Anthrax at all. That there's your other unpopular musical opinion, but I think Pantera definitely could have could have held their own in the big four. Right, and I see where you're where you're getting that, but I think. In in Testament, you know, I've always considered like the big six where it yeah. you throw in Exodus and Testament to that mix as well. But like, you know, Pantera I think is on a completely other level than than Thrash, in my opinion. Oh yeah. I mean, yes, they yeah, are I mean, they-, they started as the the the, the hair hair metal and or glam metal, whatever you want to call it, and then they went to this this other world where cowboys came out, and it was just like I said, you know, it's hard to explain. Something happened. It's like they stepped through the door, and the people who were there before were never heard from again. Yeah. And once that happened, you know, it's almost as if it built 
into something else. And then by the time, you know, reinventing the steel came out, they were completely so far removed from even cowboys at that point because they were just so much heavier. Oh, yeah. For sure. So to lump them into like the the thrash metal, even at that point, I think is kind of a it it, it doesn't really work out for me. You know, I I, I guess that's kind of weird yeah. to weird to explain. It's like where I see where they started with thrash in in the nineties that like they still could have been, but no, I mean they were going up against bands like Corn. And shit like yeah. that in the, in the late nineties. So to compare them to bands like Metallica and, you know, it, it's weird, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think they had some, you know, on Cowboys, you have heresy and shit. And, uh, you know, even like the intro riff to domination, you know, they, they definitely, I will say they, they had thrashy moments, but they didn't pigeonhole themselves into just thrash. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Absolutely. And I think that's where the the natural evolution of thrash metal happened was that 90 to like 93. Yeah, you had bands like, and and you mentioned Anthrax a a minute ago, where it was like, you don't like Anthrax, but yeah, they had the crossover to from... They were, they were already like a punk metal anyways when it came to, when it came to their side of thrash, that, that New York thrash that like yeah. mixed, mixed with like the hardcore scene. And then they crossed it over into the hip hop stuff. And I'm not a huge fan of John Bush era. To me, I like the first album and the early Joey stuff and when Joey comes back, but like when yeah. it, when it comes to, anthrax it's like there's like a dark period after like uh persistence of time where they, yeah. they don't come back in my opinion to thrash until like worship music comes out in like 2011 yeah yeah they competed a lot with grunge didn't they? yeah i mean because the 90s was when fucking megadeth was wearing plaid and had goatees yeah. so somebody <laughs> had to do it um yeah dave welcomed them on tour yeah I, I mean, Dave even tried to poach fucking Dimebag for Megadeth back in the 80s. And Dimebag was like, yeah, I'll do it, but Vinny's coming with me. And they had Gar at the time. And, uh, you know, it, they were a package deal, Dime and Vinny. Well, yeah. So just, just imagine a world where Dimebag and Vinny would have been in Megadeth. Philip, Andrew, dudes. Thank you so much for coming on the Metal Forge this week. This has been an awesome interview and conversation for the end of 2021. Thanks for having yeah, us, Mark. You. Dudes, my pleasure. I'm definitely looking forward to the new album to come out. Like I said earlier, you know, with the artwork, you've already got me sold on it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely looking nice. forward to it. And I hope, I hope sometime soon you can come into Louisville and we can get you some shows here and metal the fuck out. Hell yeah, dude! Hey, I love Louisville. Hell yeah, Louisville. 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 Sorry, I, I, I'm North North Michigan accent. Yeah. Definitely, I get it. I get it, a hundred percent. We all pronounce it different here. Some people say Louisville. Some people say Louisville. It's whatever. It's whatever. It's however you want to do it. Yeah, I remember we were sternly corrected when we were there to say ah. Louisville. So. <laughs> yeah, some some of them they some of these people down here, man, they get fucking crazy with it. So <laughs> it's like a thing for them. So on the way out today, what are we gonna play? Uh, play Poison the Well. All right, you heard them. This is Poison the Well.
Hey, thank you all for tuning into this week's episode of the Metal Forge. I want to take a minute to remind you guys about the Patreon page. Over on the Patreon page, we have the tiers set up to support the production of the show. We feature the Down and Dirty, which is just a buck. There's nothing special for that one. It just sends me a thank you because every dollar helps. Then there's the Double Down and Dirty. Much akin to the Down and Dirty tier, everything helps produce the show in the end. You make your presence known, and I appreciate that more than you realize. Thank you for being a dedicated friend and supporter to the Metal Forge. By selecting that tier, you will receive some cool Metal Forge stickers in your mailbox. Now... We're really going to start pounding the metal madness with the Apprentice Metalhead for just $5 a month. By becoming an Apprentice Metalhead, you'll be given early access to the shows, published 24 hours before everyone else gets it. You're also going to receive three entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You're also going to receive a 10% discount on all Metal Forge merch, and you're going to receive a sweet Metal Forge patch for your battle jacket or backpack. And now, here is the big one. This is the Master Metalhead for just $10 a month. By becoming a Master Metalhead, you will receive a hand-numbered Metal Forge Master Metalhead membership card. You're going to be given early access to the shows as well, with 36 hours before everyone else. You're going to receive five entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You'll be able to submit audio questions that I will use on the show of you asking questions to the upcoming guests. Remember, timing is everything, and you will need to keep up with the upcoming guest list on the website. You're also going to receive advanced knowledge of any new merch coming out and be given a 25% discount on all Metal Forge merch. And you're also going to get all of the other rewards from the other tiers. So visit patreon.com slash Metal Forge Radio today and help support the Metal Forge. Rock on.